of the nationwide hunt for Abdul Azidi, the suspect in a chemical attack in London, has now ended its sixth day. A man, though, yesterday was arrested and released uh, on, on bail for assisting him. Now, it's claimed that Azidi was granted asylum by converting to Christianity from Islam after the Home Office previously rejected his request to stay twice before. Well, joining us now is former police officer and the founder of the Law and All Foundation, Norman Brennan. Norman, thank you so much for speaking to us. There is quite a lot of, I think, confusion that there have been a few sightings via CCTV and we know uh, loads of personnel have been drafted in to comb through it. All of that is on Wednesday evening and there's not been since a sighting what, what do you think that tells you? What kind of hypothesis are the police looking at? Well, it tells you that the police are really wanting to arrest this individual, and this individual doesn't want to be arrested. Uh, what some people may not be aware of is that uh, this took quite meticulous planning by him. Uh, it's clear that before he left Northumbria, if this is the same person, which it is, uh, he planned what he intended to do. And what he probably would have done was thought, right, do I... I just stand there and let the old Bill nick me, or do I want to get away? Do I want to leave the country? Do I want to lay low? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to be spending a long time in prison. So now it's almost a cat and mouse uh, game. And if, for example, he was in Caledonia Road, I police that area, and there's lots of people don't actually know each other. They pass each other. You know, there's cheap hotels. If, some, if he jumps into a flat where a friend of his lives and is holed up there for the past week, Nobody, if the police don't know where he is or don't know that's an associate of him, he could be hiding anywhere. So it's a very difficult job and the police are obviously doing the best they can and hence they're asking the public to help too, which is really what they should be doing because it's teamwork. It's embarrassing those six days on, they still haven't found him. Sorry? It's a bit embarrassing that six days on, they still haven't found him. Well, is it embarrassing? Not, not really. There, there are many criminals that uh, we're still looking for that uh, we have been looking for for years. In general, high-profile cases, uh, the police arrest normally very quickly indeed. We do use CCTV. We do use the public support. We check phones. We check car registrations, AMPR. We ensure that uh, all ports and airports are contacted so he doesn't leave. And then we meticulously go through any contacts, any associates, the areas he's likely to be. You know, it's not like even the American films where you think and 007, where they have the arrest sometimes immediately and other times it takes a lot of hard work to trace people. What, uh, what I can say is that he's Britain's number one most wanted and... Uh, the police are doing the best they can, but there are some times when people don't want to be found that makes it that much more difficult for police. So it's not really embarrassing. Uh, often enough, we arrest terrorists and other people very, very quickly. But sometimes when people don't want to be found and we don't know their associates or we are not aware of that particular individual because they're not on his radar or on his phone network, then it makes it that much more difficult. The police yesterday said the operation was painstaking. They likened it to sort of a major murder or, or even a terrorist uh, investigation. Uh, some of the hypotheses um, that are, are coming out could be that, uh, one, that maybe someone, a network of people, uh, is sort of uh, looking after him, keeping him safe. The other one, which is really kind of uh, galling to think about, is that could there be a scenario where he's actually passed away and, and has died? And so... He's either being looked after somewhere or what the police are actually looking for is now is a body. I don't know necessarily whether a network would be looking after him. He's not, you know, he's not Mr Einstein. He is somebody that's had a dispute by the looks of it with uh, a female has committed appalling crimes. So he won't be uh, a premiership criminal. Uh, he'll be somebody that's done something dreadful, uh, may have planned where he's ex escape thereafter. And, and you're right, there is a possibility. I mean, this individual apparently has got severe uh, acid burns to his face, horrific uh, burns. They must be in, he must be in absolute pain. So there is a chance that he may well have committed suicide. It's always that option that the police look at, uh, not as a first option, but as a possible option, when someone has committed a most horrendous crime. Mm -hmm. And I understand there's a £20,000 reward being put up. It's not because the police can't cope. It's just that sometimes the police need to remind the public that there are people that do need to be arrested and very quickly. And we don't normally put rewards up this early.
happily, we normally put them up when we know that there's a community through fear of gun crime and premiership criminals uh, often won't come forward to give evidence. But in this particular case, it's the heinousness of his crime where 12 people were injured and this particular lady has been maimed that we want him arrested as soon as possible and that danger taken off the street. And that's why the reward has been put up. Norman, if he is still alive, how effective do you think that reward is? How, how effective can rewards be? Well, it's a bit like throwing a net out. You know, you, you, you throw your net out as far and wide as possible and hope that uh, the fishes are much, much nearer to you. Um, if he's got an associate that's looking after him, well, that associate probably wouldn't be giving any evidence to the police. But it's quite amazing that sometimes the higher the reward, it makes people think a little bit more. And some people that you may have relied on to protect or cover you might just make that telephone call. And there has been times in the past where that has actually happened and the police have knocked on the door and arrested the individual. It, it, it's dreadful when you have to actually offer rewards, but if a reward can take a dangerous person out of circulation, then like Crime Stoppers often put forward those rewards, it, it's the right thing to do. And if we take someone uh, dangerous off the streets, we sometimes say that's pretty good investment. Norman, thank you so much.